Welcome back, folks. In the comment section of the last video we did on the wall ward eliminator, where we completed building it, I got a lot of requests uh, of people wanting to see the noise that it produces. So that's what we're going to look at today. So here it is all on and everything. Now the 12 volt supply, uh, I have it feeding the little monitor I use to see what I'm showing you guys. So it's drawing about 0.7 amps off it. So I'm not going to be able to show you its quiescent noise, but it, it should be kind of around about the same. That's not a lot of current draw. Uh, and uh, So anyway, let's, uh, let's begin by looking at the 5 volt supply. And what I'm going to look at it with is, is this oscilloscope. You can, you can see it. I think the oscilloscope is going to be down here, and I'm going to have an electronic load up here somewhere. And this uh, probe here is a, what's called a Z-naught probe. And that, that's just saying it's, it's a transmission line probe. So it has, its impedance doesn't change all the way through. And in order to do that, because we've got a 50 ohm cable, we're gonna to have to terminate it with 50 ohms going into the scope. And we have to terminate it at this end with 50 ohms. And I've also got then a 500 ohm resistor feeding into it. So it's a 10 to one Z naught probe. And we're going to be probing the supplies with this. It's very, very short. There's no big long ground loops or anything like that. It directly comes out and goes directly into the, the ground comes out, goes directly into the shield. And so let's, uh, and you can see here, like, like if we just look at it right now, uh, it's picking up uh, environmental noise of about 5.22 millivolts. So, you know, keep that in mind when whenever we read anything. And also keep in mind that, that the DC load itself might add a little bit of noise probably not when it's not turned on but when it's turned on it might add a little bit of noise in there as it keeps adjusting its output FETs uh, to keep a constant resistance which is what we're going to be using we're going to be testing with constant resistance because I know for sure if you, if you test with constant current it will be making a racket and with constant resistance these uh, DC loads or electronic loads tend to be much quieter so we won't be adding in as as much noise that way. So let me plug this here into the 5 volt supply and we'll see what it is. It's completely unloaded. It's zero amps showing here right now. And the probe is now picking up. Let's get the statistics cleaned out and pick and get a new average. Yeah, so that looks like it's uh, homing in on something like 16 millivolts. So let's call it 16 millivolts of noise. That's nice and quiet. Now let's uh, let's pump up that load a little bit. Okay, here we've got uh, the load is telling me we have a 5.19 amp load on it, and let's uh, get the statistics cleared out here. So that's looking like a uh, let's call it 46 millivolts of noise. It's definitely better than the specifications. And let's go over the specifications quite quickly here. So all three of these supplies uh, are specified by Morrison to have less than 150 millivolts of, of noise. And they also specify that in order to get that reading, you have to have a 20 megahertz bandwidth limit on, and we do. And they also, for these two supplies here, for the 5 volt supply and the 12 volt supply, they provide a, a, what they call a typical. They don't tell you what load is on it for that typical noise reading. And I'm assuming that the, for the maximum, they're specifying a maximum load. We're going to look at each one of them here with no load on it, except for the 12 volts, of course, because I've got a 0.7 ohm load there. And then with a approximately 50% load, like we're looking at now with the, five, with the five volt supply, and then a full load, or as close as we can get to it without frigging around too much with the DC load. So let's, uh, this is great. Uh, so we're, we're well under both the typical and the maximum of uh, what we are now. So let's uh, bump this up now to full load. Okay, so now the uh, DC load, say we've got about 9.7, it's close enough to 10. And you see the frequency is not changed by very much. Now well, let's get the statistics cleared out and see what we're now producing. So it looks like at a full load here, we're producing about 70 millivolts of noise. 
that's uh, not even half of what the specification calls for. So that's a, that's a hard pass there. Very, very happy with that. So let's go on to the, the nine volt supply. Now I know that it's unfortunate I couldn't get in, in, in the same series of the 12 volt and the five volt supply. I couldn't get a nine volt supply. They just don't make it for some strange reason. And it's a much lower end supply. So let's see what it produces. Now again, it, for maximum, it's less than 150 millivolts. And we'll see if we get that out of it. Well, let me set up for the nine volts and we'll. Okay, so here we have the nine volt supply set up. It's connected up to the load, but the load's not turned on. So no current is being drawn off it. So with all the environmental noise and the load hooked up, we're getting about 90 millivolts, 91, let's call it 91 millivolts of noise, which is uh, well within specifications, but uh, a lot noisier than the five volt supply was. Okay, let's, uh, let's pump this one up. Well, that frequency changed quite a bit there. There we got it. Uh, let's get the statistics reading on it. So it's actually a little bit, a little bit quieter. It's come down a little bit. It's about 75 millivolts. But the uh, frequency sure has gone up from a couple of kilohertz to 86 kilohertz. Huge variance there. Still about half the specification though. So let's uh, let's get it up to full load. So that, that there we have uh, 3.3 amps going through it. We'll get it up. All right. Get the statistics on this. So we've got uh, 6.4, 6.48, 6.5 amps. And we're getting uh, an average of 146 millivolts. So it's, it's it's just barely beating its specifications, but it is beating it. I guess if you if you take out any extraneous noise into it, um, you could say it's maybe about 140 millivolts of total noise, which is it's okay. Not as pretty as the five volt supply, but it's definitely meeting its specifications. It's definitely better than your average wall wart, which could be three or four or five times that. Okay, let's move on to the 12 volt supply. I'll get all that hooked up and we'll have a look at the readings there. Okay, here we have the 12 volt supply. And like I said, unfortunately I have to use it because the wall wart for the monitor is no longer in this vicinity. I guess I could go dig it out of a box, but I don't feel like it. Anyway, so we're, we're drawing 0.76 or 0.77 amps um, through the 12 volt supply to power that little monitor. And we're getting, you know, 33.7, let's call it 34 millivolts of noise which is, uh, you know, really good. So uh, no worries there. So let's get it, uh, let's get it up now to about half load. Okay, so there we are. We have uh, talking 2.8 amps according to the load. Uh, according to the meter on this, it's about 3.6 amps. I guess the load would be a more accurate uh, measure. And we're getting now we're getting 32, 33 millivolts of noise. So not much change there from the one amp up to the three amps. Not much change at all, not much change in frequency either. Okay, good, 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 good. Let's bring it up to the maximum. And refreshes the statistics. And it's actually gone down, look at that. That's uh, only half of typical and a fifth of maximum. And we're drawing on it, cardiac meter here, 6.4 amps. And over there on the, the low is registering 5.6. So we'll take the, lo the load's word for it. That's very nice. Very nice indeed. I'm gonna let that cook there for a little while, see what temperature gets up to. It's not, uh, it's about body temperature now. Now there's also a comment on that last video about where I'm reading the um, leakage voltage and what the leakage voltage is. 
So a leaked voltage is basically the common mode noise that's coming out of the power supply. That means common mode means that both outputs are going up and down at the same rate. And uh, there's a couple reasons why that's bad. Uh, one is, although the, the device under power is not going to see any of that noise across its input terminals, now the whole device, if it's not ground reference, the whole device is going to be shaken up and down at that voltage. So if you, if you consider that little ball work that I showed you in the last video that had 50 volts of that, that's, um, that's going to radiate quite a bit when you attach it to some non-grounded device. That's just going to act like an antenna to radiate all that noise around your lab. And you really don't want that. And you know, I'm, I experience a lot of that around here with some of the things I have plugged into wall warts. And that's one of the key reasons I wanted to do this. And now another reason is, let's say you do put it in, let's say you, you're powering a function generator or something of that nature, a, a something that's injecting a signal into a device that is ground reference, such as an oscilloscope or some other thing that just happens to be your ground reference device. And you're checking that signal into, let's say the input of a, an FET. Uh, that's, that kind of 50 volts is going to destroy an FET. That's not going to be good. Even though it's only, you know, in the tens or hundreds of microamps of current, FETs don't care. I mean, they, 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 the current doesn't flow into them anyway. So they just see that voltage, that voltage is too high, it'll destroy them. So, uh, and this is how I'm measuring it, okay? so. It's between this case here, this case is at, as at ground. I brought over the ground, the green wire come over here. So this is at ground potential. And I measure between ground potential and the output. And we're getting nine volts here. I guess I guess you should get to you this meter in the way here. Okay, put over the meter here and we'll get rid of the scope and the load. So you can see the meter. So, okay, so we're gonna measure between earth ground and the output terminal, the positive output terminal, we get nine volts. And then the negative output terminal, we get the same voltage. And the reason we get the same voltage is because it's common mode. They're both outputting the same AC voltage at all the time. And on the five volts, or the nine volts for the pi, a little bit less at 6.3 volts. But these are all very acceptable when you compare them to 50 volts and they're going to be much better. Now this one here, if I recall correctly, was quite a bit better. And now even under a full load, we've only got 0.2 volts. That's excellent. That's really excellent performance. So if you have any more questions about uh, what this leakage voltage or common mode noise, please ask them. I'll, I'll try to answer them the best I can. So anyway, that's it guys. This thing is uh, performing uh, fantastically well, in my opinion. I'm extremely happy with it. And it's it's really good that it's performing that because it, like I say, it wasn't cheap. Like, uh, yeah, so look, go through the the parts in the, in the previous video, go through all the parts I listed and you know add them all up. And then throw in, uh, I, you know, the boards cost me $50 for five sets. And so add in, you know, $10 on top of that for one set of boards. And that's roughly what this thing costs. And But I think it's worth it. I think it's so much better than the uh, traditional cheap wall warts. It's well worth the effort for me to reduce the likelihood of damaging a sensitive component, reduce the noise in my lab, and reduce the ridiculous consumption of AC outlets with all those stupid wall warts. And most of them are so badly designed. They're not, they're not designed to get along with other things you're plugging into a power strip. They take up too much room or they're oriented the wrong way and you can only use them at the end or you can only use them in the middle or some other reason. This uses a standard IEC type plug. All right, thanks very much guys for coming to join me and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Hope you got something out of this. Bye-bye.